Valor Bards may be Bard's most underrated subclass. Let's talk about them. Starting at 3rd level, we get proficiency in medium armor and shields, as well as martial weapons. This is a significant and undervalued addition to Bards. I have been constantly talking about how Bards really struggle with defenses early on in the game. Plus 4 AC, on average, is going to be a big, big deal. It's going to go a long way in making you far more survivable as a caster. I really see this feature branching us off in two different directions. The first direction is we throw on our shield, we throw on our medium armor, and then we have a spellcasting focus in our main hand. Other than that, we play exactly as a bard plays, no change. Now the second playstyle I see this opening up is potentially the best spell bow in the game. We pick up a longbow, we get to work. Now you may have noticed I didn't mention grabbing a rapier and a shield and running in on the front line, and there are some good reasons for that, reasons I'm going to touch on a little bit later in the video. Also at third level we pick up combat inspiration. Combat inspiration allows our allies to A, add the inspiration to their AC, as a reaction during one attack, or B, they can use it to increase the damage of one of their attacks. Now increasing the damage of one of our attacks is something that we got in Tasha's additional features, and I talked about it when I talked about the main bard class. On average, around three points of damage is not worth what else inspiration can do. It's not worth failing a very important skill check that could be game-changing. It's not worth failing a concentration check when your ally's concentrating on a fight-winning spell. Three damage just is not that significant and it never becomes that significant. So honestly, this one's pretty hard pass for me. Increasing our AC, on the other hand, is worth doing, but it still needs to be weighed against what else we can do with our inspiration. So like, I think about it this way. If there is a single big attack that's going to make someone do a concentration check anyways, well, we can 100% succeed on that concentration save if they don't hit the attack, if our AC is high enough that they just miss. So I do think it has a place, but I do think it needs to be weighed. There are going to be times times when it's better to take the hit if it's very unlikely for you to block it, take the hit, and then go for the concentration save with your inspiration. I really like inspiration. I've said that many times throughout this series, but inspiration is such a skill-based feature. I really love it. I think it's very well designed. At level 6, we pick up extra attack. Now, extra attack isn't going to do anything if you're just playing like a normal bard with better armor, but for the bard -cher, it's super simple and straightforward. It's just going to make it continue being better than our cantrips. At level 14, we also pick up battle magic, which is similarly straightforward. Again, for the bard that has the shield and the spellcasting focus, this isn't going to do anything for you. But for the barcher, this is going to be simple and straightforward. Every time we cast a spell, now we get to make a bonus action attack. We use our action to cast our fight winning spell, bonus action, capitalize on it with an attack. So when I hear criticisms of the College of Valor, I really hear it in two different ways. The first is that they are not seen as having a powerhouse feature. An example of that would be the College of Lore's additional magic secrets. That's a powerhouse feature and people know it. The second gripe I hear about College of Valor is that they don't make very good gishes. They aren't good at grabbing a sword and a shield and running in and smacking people. And I would like to address both of those criticisms. And that's the thing about Valor Bards, is that their strength is very deceptive. So when we look at the shield build, we have around plus 4 AC once you include the medium armor and the shield. Maybe even plus 5 if we're willing to take half plate and, and have disadvantage on our stealth checks. This doesn't sound like a powerhouse feature, but what if I worded it this way? What if the feature said, you constantly have the shield spell cast on you? You never have to use your reaction. You never have to use a spell slot. You just always have it on you. That sounds like a really, really good feature. That sounds like a powerhouse feature. That's basically what this feature is, except we also get martial weapons on top of it. It's a fantastic feature, and I know it doesn't sound as sexy as additional magical secrets, but this is a powerhouse feature all the same. And as I mentioned before, the Valabard isn't seen as a very good Gish build. And you know what? It's fair. Here's the thing about being a Gish bard. If I am a cleric and I run in close, I have an incentive to do so because now my spiritual guardians hit some more people. If I'm a blade singer, I'm incentivized to run up close because I have shadow blade, which is excellent consistent damage. But what's our payoff for Valor Bard running up close and attacking? We don't have any payoffs. We can do everything we can do just as well from afar as we can up close. Additionally, if we're holding a shield and a sword, we don't have an extra hand for our spellcasting focus. This is a problem because it makes it so we can only use spells that only have verbal components, which is just a subset of our spell list. The Swords Bard allows us to use our sword as a spellcasting focus, but the Valor Bard doesn't. So that sword and shield build 
which on first look, it looks like the Valor Bard wants to be, doesn't actually work very well, is what this feature does for us is it allows us to be potentially the best damn spell bow in the game. The Valor Bard is an incredible spell bow. Now by being an archer, we increase our range from 60 feet to 150 feet. That is massive, and that is nearly three times the range that we can use defensively. We can take better cover, we can better position ourselves, we can better position ourselves to support our allies while still being able to support the fight offensively. And furthermore, we do this while having a bonus to our AC from medium armor. Archery also synergizes with our spells fantastically, because we will probably open up the fight with a fight winning spell, and then we'll start shooting our bow. And we can mix in spells like Silvery Barbs as a reaction. We can position ourselves well amongst our teammates, and then cancel out crits with Silvery Barbs. And that only takes a reaction, so come our turn, we can continue shooting our arrows. Healing Word is another good example of this, that we can be a emergency medic while still shooting arrows at people. Really great synergy with the spells here. And that only increases as we get to our higher levels and we can cast our fight winning spell and shoot a bow. Now I really think there's two ways to do the Barcher build with the Valor Bard. There's the first, which I would call the low commitment, and the idea is you're just replacing your cantrips with your bow. And then everything else you do is the same as a bard would do. You focus on building your charisma, you take feats and magical secrets that are just about being a great spellcaster, and that's a great build. Or, we can hard commit to being a fantastic archer. We might take more in dexterity than we do in charisma. We might take feats like sharpshooter to increase both our range and our damage output. Then our magical secrets will probably revolve around being a great archer. Two fantastic ones are or find greater steed to give us a flying speed essentially and we can rain arrows from above with sharpshooter really badass and then we combine that with ranger's swift quiver which lets us do two bonus action attacks so now we have four attacks as an archer which is just stupendous and really those are the two extremes and you could probably find many different builds in between those two extremes but in either case both extremes are fantastic off the top of my head i can't think of a better spell bow and this is a playstyle that literally only the Valor Bard can pull off. And that's why Valor Bards are criminally underrated. Today I wanted to do a little something different with the outro. I wanted to end it with a joke. But before then, you can find the rest of our Bard subclass deep dive right here if you want to enjoy some more Bard goodness. Show us a little bit of love on YouTube. You know the drill at this point. Like, comment, subscribe. But most importantly, check out some of our other videos. Please continue enjoying our content. And now, for the promised joke. How do you woo a D&D &D girl? You take her on a D8. Thanks for watching.